As we get through the chapters on rotational motion, including this part where we deal with rotational kinetic energy, we can start to deal with things like spools of wire, or even fairly quickly moving on to pulleys with masses and maybe even friction. So let's start with this fairly simple case where we have a singular cylinder with a cord wrapped around it. There's two situations here, one where you have a force that pulls downwards, whereas the other one, you have a weight hanging on the cord. The two look fairly similar because it seems like you got 40 newtons pulling down on the string, but we'll see in a second how they'll be different. But let's do part A first. So we're told to use the work energy theorem, and basically that's what I call the conservation of energy formula. And whenever we do this, it's good to draw kind of like the time one, time two situation. In this case, you have time one, your V is equal to zero, your omega is equal to zero. And then in time two, now that you're moving, but you're rotating around the center of the cylinder, the central axis of the cylinder. So omega is equal to omega two, but V is still equal to zero. To track that stuff, we usually like to put a little table around time one, time two, V omega H for your potential energy as well. We'll define that to be zero, zero to start with. The only thing new is this omega two, which is what we're looking for. So in between these two times, you also have to consider my one to two, all my non-conservative work. So let's draw a free ride diagram of this system. You've got the force of the cord pulling downwards, but you also have mg it's going through the center of mass, which presumably will be going through the center of the cylinder. And this cylinder seems like it's held fixed, so there's some kind of reaction forces where we've defined my positive x and positive y like that. These forces, they don't do any work because their displacement is zero. It's a fixed point. And mg being my potential energy is tracked that it doesn't do anything. The height doesn't change. So that also is not part of my work because it's a conservative force. Then we have my force. So then this work term, if we're going to do f dot delta d, we realize that the force is 40 newton in the negative j direction dotted with negative five in the j direction as well, giving me j dot j, so positive 200 newton meter, 200 joules. They go in the same direction, so you expect the work term to be positive. So a lot of these things, they go to zero, like the potential energy, there's no spring, there's no change in height, and the initial kinetic energy is zero because it's at rest to start with. It seems highly implied. So in the work term, we can write my work, which is 200 joules, as we've talked about, equals my kinetic energy term, which is one half mv squared, plus, because now we no longer just consider translation, when we consider rotation, we also have to consider my rotational kinetic energy, which is one half i omega squared. Very much similar, of course, between the two terms, but one describes the translation movement of the center of mass of the body and the rotation about that center of mass. The center of mass in this case is of course not moving, so that goes to zero. And we're even told what the moment's inertia is. We could have figured out the moment's inertia ourselves if they have given us the mass, because we know the dimensions of the cylinder, but here they're being nice and they gave it to us, so let's just plug that in. Rearranging and solving for omega, we get that in radians per second. Which to complete as a velocity, we also need the direction, and it goes that way. Pretty much by inspection. You could probably figure out that it's positive z, or in the k hat direction, or you can just write that arrow, or you can say it's clockwise. So that's pretty basic. You just have a force over some displacement, doing some work, and it rotates. So let's look at part B. 
So in part B, the difference is now we have two parts to the body instead of just the one. So both of these things can move. So let's name these things. Let's call this cylinder body A and call that hanging mass body B. So instead of just talking about the kinetic energy of the one body, we now have a total kinetic energy of the system. So we have a few more things to track. Let's look at time one and time two yet again. So in the beginning, B is here, A is here, nothing's happening. VA is equal to zero, omega A is equal to zero, and also VB is equal to zero. Later on, you're now a little further down, which presumably is five meters lower. So if we call that H is equal to zero, this must be H is equal to negative five meters. So now that's five meters lower, and we have some kind of VB2 and omega A2. Making that little chart again, you have VA, omega A, VB, H A is not going to change, but we'll include it for completeness, and HB. So it's zero, negative five meters, not changing. All these are zero to begin with. The cylinder's center of mass is not moving. We have omega A2, which we don't know and we want to know. But we also have VB2, which we're not quite sure about either. So it seems like, despite the fact we only have one equation, we actually have two unknowns, it almost seems like. So this is where we bring in the special thing that we call the no-slip condition. So what is it that is not slipping? It's the rope is not slipping on the roller, on the cylinder here. So that means the speed of the rope, which is also VB2 in this case, is equal to the tangential speed of wherever the rope contacts the pulley. So you can relate that using the factor of radius. So that lets us relate both of these things. So this is equal to, and now we only have one unknown and presumably we can solve for everything we need. So in between, we also have to worry about the work, right? Again, you draw the free body diagram, which has M A G R X R Y. Again, we're gonna say we have X and Y like that. And then this is mg underneath. We're not going to worry about the tension because that's an internal force. Or if you must, you realize that you draw tension this way and tension that way, and they basically undo each other. So again, these guys delta d equal to zero, so works equal to zero. And then these two guys are what we call conservative forces, so we don't have to worry about their work. Writing out all the energy term, we start with the kinetic energy to begin with, which is zero plus. It's been defined that all my heights are zero there, and the work was zero, so this is KE, PE, and work, all zero, equals, we have your final KE, which is one half I A omega A2 plus one half M B V B2 square. The cylinder's in pure rotation, so only has the rotation bit, and the mass is only purely translating down, so it only has a translation bit, plus mg h2, b2. So let's break this down a little bit. We got ia, which I have. We have this one, which we're interested in finding. We talked about how vb2 is omega a2 times r, square the entire thing, plus mg, which we have, and bg times this minus five meters. So mbg is just 40 newtons. So let's also find out what mb by itself is because we need it over here. So we got 40 newton divided by 9.81 meters per second square. Just a little bit over four kilograms. Swing that over, you have 40 newtons times five meters equal to your one half i a. Let's factor out the omega a two square actually. 
plus one half m b r square. So what's happening here really is that you're kind of providing the same amount of work by dropping something down, but now that work has to be split between the rotation of the cylinder and the translation of that mass. So it takes a little bit away. So you imagine that the omega is going to be a little smaller, which if you plug in everything, you will find that it is just a little bit smaller since you're given R, I, A, and we worked out MB. If you plug all those in, you'll get this, which is just a little lower than our answer in part A. And again, this goes clockwise like that. So a quick recap. We've dealt, we talked about how you have to now consider both the translation of the center of mass of different bodies in the system as well as the rotation. And there are many cases where we can use this no slip condition to relate the translational speed of a part of a system to the rotational speed of another.